This week I'll show you how to calibrate your monitor. Adorama TV presents Exploring Photography with Mark Wallace, where you will learn innovative techniques on shooting a wide range of photography. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of Exploring Photography right here on Adorama TV. Well today we're going to be talking about one thing that drives lots of people crazy and that is the question of why are my prints not matching my screen? And so you can see I just did this photo shoot here and here's a photo of Lex that I really love and here's a print and they just don't match. And so this is really bright, this isn't as bright, uh, the colors are different. And so the question is how do I get my print to match my screen? Well, what we need to do is we need to calibrate our computer's monitor, and that is so we can see our color, make sure it's accurate, and understand that the luminosity of our screen matches the luminosity of our print. Well, what the heck is luminosity? Well, that's brightness, and that is where most of our problems come in, because a lot of you have written to me on Facebook or Twitter and said, hey, it looks like my uh, photo on my screen is really bright, it's really vibrant, it's got lots of colors, but when I print it, ugh, it doesn't look so good. And when I uh, calibrate my monitor, everything looks dull and boring, and so I don't like to calibrate the monitor because it makes everything look nasty. What's going on? Well, what we need to understand is the difference between a computer monitor and a print. Specifically, a computer monitor is projecting light. And so it's like a flashlight. It is shining light right into your eyes. And a print is reflecting light. And so the print really uh, is dependent on how much light you have in the room. If the window's open, if the window's closed, if the lights are on or if they're off, everything changes. Now to really make sure you understand this, we have a nifty animation that explains all this stuff. Your computer monitor projects light. So regardless of how bright or dim the ambient light is, the light from the monitor will be constant. Prints reflect light. So in bright light, they will be vibrant and luminous. And in dark light, they're going to be dim and dull. When we compare our computer monitor and a print side by side, notice that the computer monitor remains constant, but our print changes with the ambient light. All right, well now that we know why ambient light is so important and why monitor calibration is so important, how do we calibrate our monitor? Well, it's extremely simple to do this. And so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to use this little device right here, and this is called the x i1 uh, display. So this is the i1 display. Now x has all kinds of calibration devices, and I love x Photo. Um, if you really want the uh, professional solution that, uh, that calibrates everything, not only the computer monitor, but it also takes into account ambient light and also builds profiles for different types of paper on your printer, then I highly suggest that you go with the i1 Photo Pro 2. Now that's definitely a higher end system. It's not for everybody. There are other solutions. In fact, the Color Monkeys, I've got one right here. This is a Color Monkey display and this will uh, calibrate your monitor and do everything we're going to show you today. There's also a Color Monkey Photo that uh, will not only calibrate your monitor, but it can also calibrate your printer's uh, their paper profiles as well. And so if you want an, uh, an entire solution, I suggest that you either get the i1 Photo Pro 2 or get the Color Monkey Photo, one of those two. But today we're going to concentrate on just calibrating our, our monitor, and it works the same no matter what device you get. And so um, what you need is you need something that can measure um, the light coming from your monitor, and you also need something that can measure the ambient light, and this will do both of those things. In fact, it's got this little uh, arm here that you can uh, pull up, and then it sort of swivels. And so right here you can see that this is, uh, will read light from the monitor, or you can even put it where it uh, will calibrate a projector, so you can do that. And then this little cap goes over the top like this, and that allows you to uh, monitor ambient light. And so it does ambient and the monitor, and it works really easily. So how do we get this to, to work? Well, I'm going to uh, move this around here. And what we want to do is we want to calibrate the monitor, and we do that using our i1 profiler. And this is the software that comes with your x rite product. So if it's the i1 or if it's the Color Monkey, it's going to come with something like this. And all you have to do is click on the button that says Display Profiling. And what I love about the X-Rite software is it is a uh, sort of a wizard-based thing. So in other words, you have the um, ability to do this as a more advanced user. So if you know about Gamma and ICC profiles and all of that stuff, you can dive right in and do that. If you don't, 
you don't need to know all that stuff. All you have to do is uh, basically click the next button. So that's what we're going to do right now. It's saying, hey, I recognize that you have a color LCD and it's this CCFL type. I don't even need to know what that is. Um, it knows what my white point and my luminance should be. I don't have to know any of that stuff. Uh, if you're more of an advanced user, you can choose different white points and luminance levels. And so we're just going to leave this at the default here. And then what we can do here is um, we can go and make sure, I'm going to make sure I say adjust my profile based on the ambient light because we talked about how important that is. So I'm going to check that. And then I'm just going to hit the next button. And what it asks me to do is, hey, start the measurement. All right, let's start the measurement. I click on that button and it tells me, hey, put this right here just like it is. It's got a little cartoon that tells me what to do. And I say, okay, I click next and then it measures the ambient light. It's already done it. It's already got that. So now it's saying, hey, flip this little guy over like this. So you do that, and then it's telling me to put this right on my monitor. And you want to put that right in the center, and you want to make sure that it is nice and flush against the monitor. Sometimes if you have a larger monitor, you might need to put it back just a little bit. And so I'm going to say, okay, I got it. It's flush against the monitor. And then I click the next button. Now the next thing that happens, as you can see this here, it's going to be going through all of these cycles of uh, measuring luminance and the colors. And so what it's saying is how bright is absolute white? When I tell the computer to be absolute white, how bright is that? How uh, dark is absolute black? When I tell the computer to show me red, is it actually red or is it a little bit uh, off red? Is it maybe an amber? When I say project blue, is it actually blue or is it maybe a purple? And so it's saying uh, show all these different colors and all these different uh, brightnesses of gray and then it's measuring that with this device, and then it's recording all of those results. And so it knows if uh, it should be displaying red, but the computer is displaying something else. It knows what kind of adjustment to make so that red is red, blue is blue, green is green, all of your colors are accurate, and it also knows how bright the monitor should be so that it emulates what a print is going to look like in that ambient light. And so it matches all that stuff up. Now this is going to take a few minutes. This is going to take about, um, five minutes or so, maybe three minutes, depending on the speed of your computer. So we're going to let this finish. And then once it's done, we're going to come back in and we're going to finish all of this stuff up to show you how you save that profile. And we'll show you the difference of the before and after results. All right, this is wrapping up. It's giving me more instructions here. And so it's saying, hey, why don't you take this off of here and flip this around? And so we'll do that. And I'll just click the little next button. And so there we go. We have this done. Um, and once we have that done, then we can say next because we've done all of our measurement. And then we can uh, actually name this. Now, what I like to do is I like to name this um, based on the date because it's important that you uh, profile your monitor uh, on a, a normal basis. Usually I like to do this once per week. Um, some people do it once a month, but you need to do it on a regular basis. So I name these by date. And so I'm going to name this 9-15-2013. Um, and that way I know when I did this. And then uh, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set a reminder here so that my software will automatically remind me in a week to do this again. And then it's also this thing right here. I really like this. This is ambient light monitoring. So you can turn this on or off um, and you can even have it uh, notify you. But then you can put this guy on your desk. And if you are in an environment that changes, what we talked about earlier, um, this is automatically going to measure the ambient light on a regular basis. So you can do that every 60 minutes, every 10 minutes, every 30 minutes. And really that's based on how frequently light changes. So if you're in an environment like San Francisco or Seattle, uh, where it has lots of clouds coming in and going out and the sun's coming up and going down just all day, you might want to do that every 10 minutes. If you're in a place like Phoenix, well, our sun just sort of comes up and stays and fries everything, so maybe every 60 minutes. Um, or if you're in an environment that the ambient light just doesn't change, like an office setting where their windows are closed and you have uh, consistent light, then you would turn that off because it doesn't need to monitor all of that stuff. Um, and then you wouldn't have to plug in your device at that point. So now that we have this all set up the way that we want, I just say uh, create and save profile. So I do that. And so now uh, it's there and it's reminding me, hey, um, this is going to be running constantly because you said that you wanted us to monitor this all the time. So I get a little reminder there that's saying this is software is going to be running in the background. And now what I can do is I can click the before and after. And this is pretty amazing. Uh, when I look at this, the before is a, so much more blue than the after. And you can see that really took those neutral grays. What I thought was a neutral gray, you can look at it and clearly see, oh, that's not great. It's actually got a blue color cast to it. And after, you see that that's all done. And now what I can do is if I go back over to my Lightroom and I bring this to full screen, 
this is what's really cool. Now this isn't going to match exactly because this is projecting light that's a color temperature that's different than the light that's hitting me right now. So our video cameras aren't going to capture the actual color that my eyes are seeing. But I can tell you that now when I look at these two things side by side with my normal eyeballs, that this matches this. And so the luminosity looks the same, the color looks the same, and everything matches up. And so I can see that these two things are actually in sync. And so that is how you calibrate your monitor. Now one thing I, I do have to mention, because if I don't, I know I'm going to get a billion comments on YouTube about this. The way that to, you make sure also that this matches is when you print, you need to make sure that you uh, choose the correct color profile for the printer and the paper. We don't have time to go into that right now, but it is important that you print correctly as well. And so maybe we'll do that in another color calibration video coming up soon. So let me know if you want to see that. But you have to also make sure you choose the right profile when you're printing. But that's how you calibrate your monitor, and that's how you get your prints to match your screen. Now, one thing that's important to remember is if you're interested in all those other x ray devices, the i1 Photo Pro 2, and the different i1 devices, the Color Monkey, the Color Monkey Display, the Color Monkey Photo. Um, all of those different things. You can just go to Adorama.com and you can see all of those products or go to the Adorama Learning Center and we have put links to all of those products as well. And they're also linked if you're watching us on YouTube right underneath here. And so you can see those products. They are spectacular. And the other reason I love x -Rite Photo is on the x -Rite website, Brenda Hipsher, who does all the webinars, has put together a library of educational material telling you about color, color theory, color management, and all of those things. And those are full, uh, sometimes one, two, and three hour workshops that are still out there for free. And they do tours and educational stuff all of the time. So um, it is just a solid uh, device. And so that's why I use x -Rite Photo, because they are awesome. All right, well, there you have it. That's all the time we have this week. And that's how you get your monitor calibrated. And so I will see you again right here on Adorama TV next time. Hi, everybody. What up? This week, I'll show you how to... <laughs> this week, we'll show you what it's like to be drunk and do voiceovers. And so we'll talk to you a little bit about the step that we're uh, fudge, fudge, fudge. Do I look like I have green chili coma? I could eat another five bowls of that salsa right now. Maybe not right now. <laughs> How much salsa did we eat? I think I ate three bowls of green salsa myself. Want to get the most out of your Adorama photography equipment? Visit our learning center where you can read popular articles, how-to tips, buying guides, and product reviews.